Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind to type in hashtag replay so we will know that you are watching. Good morning, Sharon Parker. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments so we'll know that you are watching. Good morning, good morning. You all know what to do. Go ahead and type in the comments. It's a great day <laughs> to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. Good morning. Good morning. As you all are jumping on, please go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast. I'm going to get this shared into my community groups. Great morning, everyone. Great morning. You all know what to do. After you have shared the video, please come back and type in hashtag shared. Good morning. Great morning, Marion. Good morning. So good to see you all. Hello, Annie. Hi, Tracy. Good morning. It's so good to see you all. Hello, Shanita. I feel like I'm a little bit too excited this morning. <laughs> good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Audrey. It's so good to see you all. I wish I could say good morning. Just call out every single one of you all. Good morning, Lynn, Tamiko. It's a great day to be alive. Somebody go ahead and say, God did it again. <laughs> God did it again. He woke us up and allowed us to see another day. And somebody type in the comments, God, I thank you. Yes, we got up. It's a great day to be alive. A great day. Great day. Great day. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead and get this shirt out. My phone is logged in now. Let's go ahead and get this shirt into... Um, the community groups after you have shared come back and type in hashtag shared so we'll know that you shared as i always say it's a fine time to evangelize and there's the, no easier way than to share a video than to share this video so is it just my volume or i can't hear her i don't know let me make sure my volume is turned all the way up i don't know can you all hear me today can you all hear me i need to know um let me see if let me get logged in from my phone here just to make sure um that you all can hear me i don't know can you all hear me god i thank you yes i can some you have no sound if you can hear me type in a yes if you all can hear me type yes there's no sound can anybody hear me <laughs> All right. Okay, you can. So for those of you that cannot hear, you might want to go out and then um, come back in because if at least one person is able to hear me, okay, a couple of you are able to hear me, then that means um, everything is good. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going. So um, you all know what to do. Uh, if you have not grabbed your anointing oil yet, go ahead and grab your anointing oil. Make sure that you have anointed your hands. You all type in the comments. My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch prosper. Everything I touch turns to gold. Amen. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. Okay, good. You can hear me. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus name. How do I know? Because the Bible tells me so. So I see there's a few of you that are saying you can't hear. So um, you probably can't hear me saying this, but can someone type in the comments, go back out and then come back in? <laughs> someone type in the comments go back out and then come back in I don't know I don't know there's a lot of you saying no sound today okay hold on I'm sorry you all let's see wow there's no sound on my phone either it says they need to check their volume button at the bottom of the page okay yeah I, I don't know I don't know I'm just going to keep going because some for those of you that can hear me uh for the others we'll just catch the replay all right so where are we at let's go ahead and thank the father if you are on this broadcast live or if you are catching the replay that is not a small thing that means that you were on the way let me get my stuff set back up that means that you were on the wake up list there's so many saying i cannot hear you back out and come back in i'm i don't know what facebook is doing <laughs> i don't know so um 
if you're on this broadcast live, if you're catching the replay, that means that you were on the wake up list and that's not a small thing. So let's just take a moment to thank the Father. Go ahead and type in the comments, God, I thank you. So Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. Father, we love you. Yeah, I can't even hear from my other phone. I'm not going to worry about it. For those of you that can hear me, just listen. <laughs> For those that can't, um, I know when they catch the replay, they'll be able to. Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. You are God and you are good in every way there is to be good and we say thank you we thank you for waking us up this morning father we thank you for allowing us to see another day we just want to say thank you we thank you for life we thank you for health we thank you that your mercies are new every morning we say thank you. We thank you, Father, for waking us up with a sound mind. We thank you, Father, for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you, Father, for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We say thank you. That's right, Audrey. Thank you, Lord, for everything. And I want to ask you a question. What if you woke up today with what you, what, yes, the power of distractions. Yes, we're going to keep going. What if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday? What would you have? What if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday? What would you have? I want you to think about that. What if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday? What would you have? All right, so go ahead and type in the comments. God, I thank you for everything. And we're going to jump in with our um, opening verse for today. And it's coming from Psalms 37, 23. If someone can type that in the comments, Psalm 20, 37, 23. Again, Psalms 37, 23. That's right. We just plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast in Jesus name. Amen. Those that can't hear, they're going to go out, come back in here and, and hear perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. Psalm 37, 23. Because if I keep reading the comments, I can't hear. Then I'll be distracted. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Let me read that again. Psalm 37 verse 23. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Listen, somebody should have gotten excited. Did anybody else get excited reading that? Let me read it again. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. I don't know about you, but I got excited reading that again. So I'm going to read our um, devotional for today. And then I have a few things written down that I want to share with you all. All right. We're just going to jump right on in. Forget about yesterday's worries, for they no longer matter. What a word for a Monday morning. Somebody just type in, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. Forget about yesterday's worries, for they no longer matter. The enemy wants you to focus on what happened rather than what you can make happen. Somebody say, I'm not falling for the distractions. I am not giving in to any of the distractions. Let me read that one more time. Forget about yesterday's worries, for they no longer matter. The enemy wants you to focus on what happened rather than what you can make happen. Remember, I always say what we focus on, we magnify and we get to choose what it is that we focus on. And of course, the enemy wants us to be distracted with what happened rather than what we can make happen. But we're saying on this morning, on this Monday morning, we're going to forget about what happened yesterday. Forget about it. Y'all type in the comments, forget about it. Forget about it. And for those of you that just tuned in, good morning. If you could type at least one thing in the comments that you are thankful for. And if you have not shared the broadcast yet, if you can be so kind and go ahead and share it. We're not going to be stingy. We never know who needs to hear this on this morning. All right. And after you've shared, come back and type in hashtag shared. I want you to see the details and the patterns in the spiritual realm, says the father. The enemy, the enemy's doubt and indecisiveness will block your ability to see clearly what lies ahead of you and my, my listen 
I'm asking the Father on today that may we all see clearly. May we all have 2020 vision in the spirit. May we all have 2020. Y'all type in 2020 in the comments. May we all have 2020 vision in the spirit. The Father says, I will direct your step. I will direct the steps of the righteous as I delight in every part of it. Let me read Psalm 37, 23 again. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Sin is missing the mark. It is the enemy's desire to continually have you to blame yourself or even others for missing the mark. But we already know that the word says that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and the enemy wants us to be distracted. I need you all to say, I will not be distracted. But today we take ownership that we change the way we think by doing what we set out to do. You will not be under any curse that has been set by the spirit of doubt for my son Jesus has set you free from the curse of the law and redeemed you. Your destiny will not be interrupted. Your destiny will not be interrupted. For my son Jesus has broken every chain to release you to my promises. I need you all to type in the comments, the chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. Now, hold on one second. The chains are broken. I need you all to type that in the comments. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. And so I wrote down a few things that I want to share. And that this is titled, God orders your steps in him. God orders your steps in him. And if someone can type in Proverbs 16, 9 for me. Proverbs 16, 9. Someone type in it. That's right. I will not be distracted. <laughs> Just like I will not be distracted by <laughs> all the stuff going on over here. But I will not be distracted. <laughs> Proverbs 16.9. Somebody type that in the comments. It's way too early for this this morning. <laughs> Proverbs 16.9. If someone can type that in the comments. A man's heart plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Proverbs 16, 9 says, a man's heart plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Somebody type in, but the Lord, but the Lord determines his steps. So I wrote up just a few things down that I wanted to share with you all today. Um, I just read Psalm 37, 23 yesterday, like, over and over and over and the more that I meditated on it the more I just got excited I don't know why I just got all excited all over again as if I'd never read it before um, just got excited all over again um, so I wrote God orders our steps because there is somewhere he wants us to go <laughs> all right and, and I need you all to just think about that for a moment God orders our steps because he has somewhere he wants us to go. God orders our steps because he has somewhere for us to go. And he desires for us to walk with him. And he desires for us to walk with him. Let me read Psalm 37, 23 one more time. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful and so grateful um, good morning to those of you that are just tuning in. Um, the um, avatar things, emoji things are always throwing me off when I see names and I'm like, who is that? <laughs> okay, God orders our steps because there is somewhere he wants us to go and he desires for each and every one of us to walk with him. Audrey, he desires for you to walk with him. Anna, he desires for you to walk with him. Annie, he desires for you to walk with him. Good morning to my nephew seven. You all type in the comments, say good morning to my nephew seven, C-E-V-I-N, seven. I, I always have to spell his name out. Good morning, nephew, all right? And I wrote, it's okay for us to plan. We must do it recognizing that our plans will only succeed if it is the Lord's will. I need you all to type in the word if. 
I'm not saying that we don't need to plan. You know, it's okay for us to plan. But as long as we recognize that the plans that we make will only succeed if it is the Lord's will. And how do we find out what his will is for us? His will is his word. So if we are spending time in the word, hearing from him, fellowshipping with him, then we will know what his will is. And the more that we spend time with the Lord, um, the more his desires become our desires. And then as we're planning the things out that we desire, you know, because they're no longer our fleshly desires, but his desires, we can then know that the plans that we have laid out will succeed. I said that really fast, but did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? So again, it's okay for us to plan as long as we recognize that the, our plans will only succeed if it is the Lord's will. If it is the Lord's will. And somebody say, his will is his word. His will is his word. So if we're spending time in his word, we can rest assured that the plans that we make Will more than likely be in his will so um i want to read james 4 13 through 15 if someone can type that in the comments that's right that's right order my steps in your word lord amen god's will is his word good morning marion i'm so glad you can hear me now all right so let's read james 4 13 through 15 james 4 13 through 15 if someone can type that in the comments for me James 4 13 through 15 let God plan your life somebody say let God plan your life let God plan your life all right some of you say today or tomorrow we will go to some city we will stay there a year do business and make money but you do not know what will happen tomorrow your life is like a mist you can see it for a short time but then it goes away so you should say if the Lord wants we will live and do this or that. But now you are proud and you brag. All of this bragging is wrong. Anyone know who knows the right thing to do but does not do it is sinning. And um, that was in the New Century Version, the New Century Version that I read that out of today. So um, I want you all to meditate on James chapter 4, verses 13 through 15 today. That's one of um, a couple of the verses that we're going to use. Um, and if you choose to do so, you can go through the SPEC Bible Study Method tool if you need it. Um, I can drop it in the comments. Or you can go over to the um, Waking Early for His Glory resource page. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll find it there. Um, and as a matter of fact, let me just say this. If you have not gone over and um, typed in the search box, Waking Early for His Glory, Make sure you like that page because everything that I share here um, or I talk about, I share over on that page. That way it's easy for you all to find it because um, I, if I drop it in the comments, it gets lost with all the comments coming through each day. All right, so we're meditating on James chapter 4 verses 13 through 15 today. All right, the average person takes about 4,700 steps a day. All right, 4,700 steps a day. And so um, for Christians, God orders every single one of those steps. For us as Christians or believers of Jesus Christ, God orders every single one of those steps. So when you stop and just think about it for a minute, and I need you all to type in the comments, Lord, I thank you for ordering my steps. I don't know about you, but I want the Lord to order my steps. So again, the average person takes 4,700 steps a day. And for us as Christians, us as believers of Jesus Christ, the Lord orders every single one of those steps. How do we know? Because the Bible tells us so. I need you all to say, Lord, order my steps. God, I thank you for ordering my steps. Again, Psalm 37, 23, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every area <clears throat> of our lives. And so as we read Psalm 37, 23, there are two truths that we can pull from this. All right. And the first one is God has an order for our steps. God has an order for our steps. Why does he order our steps? Because he has some place for us to go. So the second truth that we can pull from Psalm 37, 23 is God is ordering our steps by securing our footing. 
God is ordering our steps by securing our footing. And I need you all to say this morning, we thank you. We are so thankful that we serve a God who keeps us from falling. Amen. And when I began to sit and think about that yesterday after I wrote that down, I'm like, my God, I thank you. So let's just take a moment. Someone type in the comments, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. So the second part of is a promise. The second part of Psalm 37, 23 is a promise when we allow God to order our steps. We must allow God to order our steps. He is a gentleman and he will not force himself on us. We must allow somebody type in hashtag allow. We must allow God to order our steps and he takes great joy in doing so as we allow him to do so. How do we know? Because Psalm 37, 23 tells us he delights in every detail of our lives. He delights in every detail of our lives. So he takes great joy in doing so, but we must allow him to do so. All right. We must allow God to take the lead. We must allow him to take the lead. So I need you all to say, I, I allow you to take the lead. We must allow him to do so. We must allow him to take the lead. And I wrote down three benefits that I've seen in my own life when I've stopped and I paused and I said, wait a minute, let me back up and allow God to take the lead. So there are three benefits. Well, there are more, but three benefits that I've seen in my own life when we allow God to take the lead. And how many of you know, he's a very good leader. He's a very good leader. He's a very good leader. His leadership is awesome. His leadership is awesome. So one, the first benefit of allowing God to lead is peace. Is peace. If you feel like you are lacking peace, I need you to pause and ask yourself, am I allowing God to lead? If you're feeling a lack of peace, stop and ask yourself, am I allowing God to lead? All right? Repeat and what did you do with Trista? What did you need me to repeat or did you mean replay? All right So another benefit of allowing God to lead that I've seen in my own life is rest Is rest we are able to rest from the striving and the doing and the working and the going and the doing and the doing Because we're allowing God to lead we're allowing him to order our steps and in doing that we're no longer taking a whole bunch of steps and doing a whole bunch of things that God hasn't asked us or led us to do. All right. So the second benefit of allowing God to lead. And the third is contentment. And yes, he is a very good leader. Hashtag ask me how I know. So the three benefits of allowing God to lead are peace, rest, and contentment. Um, I need someone to type these scripture references in the comments for me because these are the ref scriptures that we're going to be meditating on today. Um, so the first one is Psalm 3723. Psalm 3723. And the second is Proverbs 16:9. Proverbs 16:9. And then um, the third scripture reference was James chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. James chapter 4 verse 13 through 15. And if you want, you can write those out on index cards and spend some time today meditating on them. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three times a day. Somebody type the number three in the comments. We're going to meditate on these scripture references three times a day. You can even voice record yourself reading all of the scripture references. Play it three times a day, listen to it all day, whatever works for you. Just make sure you spend today meditating on them. All right. And so that was all that I had to share. If you don't take anything else away from this, you could take away that God's lead. God is an awesome leader. You know, God's leadership is perfect. All right. God's leadership is perfect. So allow him to lead. Allow him to order your steps. And so I want you all. I don't have declarations, but I have confessions and I want you all to confess with me and then We'll move into the second half of the broadcast, which is listening to the one-year Bible. Um, and I think it's become my favorite part of waking early for his glory because I love listening to the one-year Bible. So confess this with me, all right? 
Today, God is ordering my steps. Today, God is ordering my steps. If you're at a place where you can speak it out loud, go ahead and speak it out loud. There is power in our words. There is power in our words. And I, um, I was on a phone call, Rabbit Trail, I was on a phone call with a couple of people this weekend and had to remind them, and I even posted it on Facebook, I had to remind them, you know, because they were saying things and speaking things over their lives. And I'm like, I, oh, hold on, change your language. First, before we move any further, I'm going to need you to change your language because you shall have what you say. And I had to remind them, I had to remind them that it's really important, the words that come out of our mouths and the words that we're speaking over our lives. And I have to stop people sometimes dead in their tracks. Listen, I have to stop myself in, dead in my own tracks sometimes and be like, change your language because you shall have what you speak. All right. And so um, if you can speak this out loud, speak this out loud. Today, God is ordering my steps. Good morning, Darius. Good morning to those of you that are just tuning in. I am walking in the way he leads me. I am walking in the way he leads me. He has placed me on a firm rock. He has placed me on a firm rock. He has placed me on a firm rock. My every step is directed and secured in him. My every step is directed and secured in him. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to go through those confessions one more time. Um, for those of you that are just tuning in, good morning. I am so glad that you all are here. If you can be so kind and go ahead and share the broadcast and type in hashtag share because we are about to move in the second half, awaken early for his glory, listening to the one-year Bible. But before we do that, I want to go through our confessions for today one more time. Today, God is ordering my steps. Today, God is ordering my steps. I am walking in the way he leads me. I am walking in the way he leads me. And remember, his leadership is perfect. So we can trust and know that he is going to lead us in the right direction. All right. He has placed me on a firm rock. He has placed me on a firm rock. My every step is directed and secured in him. My every step is directed and secured in him. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. So listen, I was excited about sharing this this morning. If you don't take anything else away, know, trust, and believe that God's leadership is perfect and um, his leadership is perfect. So we can step back and allow him to lead us. And again, Psalm 37, 23, the Lord directs the step of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. All right. So that's it. So you all can begin to share um, your takeaways. Um, what was your aha moment? Something that stood out to you? What is something that you will do differently because of what you heard today? And while you all are typing in your takeaways, I'm going to get me a sip of water and pull out my one-year Bible. And someone type in audio.oneyearbible.com. And for those of you that may be new to the broadcast, whether you're on live with us or catching the replay, many of us are reading through the one-year Bible together. This is our second year for Waking Early for His Glory, but I've used this reading plan for many, many, many years, and it's my absolute favorite. Um, the publisher is Tyndale. There are so many one-year Bible reading plans, but if you're following Tyndale, you're on the right reading plan. So we read a portion of the Old Testament, New Testament, a small portion of the Psalms, and a really small portion of the Proverbs, and we will have read through the Bible in one year if we just follow the reading plan. So today I believe we are on May 18th and um, I am going to pull up. I feel like I need to take a breath for a second. Did I even breathe <laughs> since I started talking? I'm sorry, y'all hold on, hold the line. <laughs> hold the line. <laughs> Thank you Jesus for this sip of water. Hold the line, let me just get some water. <laughs> y'all get your stuff ready um, grab your bibles grab your journals please grab your water and if you do not have your one-year bible where you can't where you're following along if you're not sitting and following along go ahead and use this time to walk you can get a good 20 minute walk in 
uh, while we're listening to the One Year Bible. Um, so it's a great time. It's always great to multitask, all right? So I'm going to audio.oneyearbible.com. I was like, I need to take a breather. Let me breathe, get a sip of water. <laughs> I feel like I've been talking nonstop. <laughs> I, know, I was like, did I even breathe? Hold the line, I need to breathe. <laughs> I feel like, I was like, hold on, wait a minute. I'm hearing myself too much. Let me breathe. <laughs> Yes. All right. Audio dot one your Bible dot com. So y'all finish take it, typing in your takeaways. We're going to move into the second half right now. <laughs> I was like, Lord, I'm hearing myself too much. Hold on. <laughs> y'all laughing at me. Does that ever happen to you where you're just talking so much and you're like, just, just, just for a second. <laughs> Let me, let's just pause for a second. All right, here we go. If the volume is good, type a number two. May 18th. Our scripture reading in the Old Testament today. Is the volume takes good? Takes place in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 22, verse 1, and we'll go through chapter 23, verse 29. Oh. In chapter... Hold on. The two truths, let me um, go ahead and do this. The two truths, the first one is God has an order for our steps. God has an order for our steps. And Regina said, yes, I was like, hold on, I've been talking, hold on, let me be quiet for a minute. The, the second truth is God is ordering our steps by securing our footing. God is ordering our steps by securing our footing. So those were the two truths. All right, here we go. Me too. We see what a motley group gathered around the exiled king. A.W. Tozer used to say, don't follow any leader until you see the mark of the oil on his forehead. David had the anointing of God, and he represented the future in Israel. Now, yes, he made mistakes and was sometimes discouraged, but he was God's man, and God used him. Contrast Saul's approach to leadership. He could not challenge his men to a holy cause. So he tried to bribe them, and he tried to play on their sympathy. He depended on spies like Doeg, and he was not afraid to murder innocent priests just to let people know who was in charge. Saul was unwilling to kill the wicked Amalekites, but he murdered God's priests. Saul was fighting a losing battle, and he was desperate. And he got more and more desperate as time went on. God, in his providence, gave David two great gifts, the ephod and a priest. He could always seek the will of the Lord as he planned his strategy. You have the word of God and an interceding high priest in heaven. Do you seek the mind of the Lord as you make decisions? And with that, let's begin our reading today in the Old Testament. May 18th. 1 Samuel 22, verse 1, through 23, verse 29. So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Soon his brothers and other relatives joined him there. Then others began coming, men who were in trouble or in debt, or who were just discontented, until David was the leader of about 400 men. Later, David went to Mizpah in Moab, where he asked the king, would you let my father and mother live here under royal protection until I know what God is going to do for me? The king agreed, and David's parents stayed in Moab while David was living in a stronghold. One day the prophet Gad told David, leave the stronghold and return to the land of Judah. So David went to the forest at Hereth. The news of his arrival in Judah soon reached Saul. At the time, the king was sitting beneath a tamarisk tree on the hill at Gabeah, holding his spear and surrounded by his officers. Listen here, you men of Benjamin, Saul shouted when he heard the news. Has David promised you fields and vineyards? 
Has he promised to make you commanders in his army? Is that why you've conspired against me? For not one of you has ever told me that my own son is on David's side. You're not even sorry for me. Think of it, my own son, encouraging David to try and kill me. Then Doeg the Edomite, who was standing there with Saul's men, spoke up. When I was at Nob, he said, I saw David talking to Ahimelech, the priest. Ahimelech consulted the Lord to find out what David should do. Then he gave David food and the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. King Saul immediately sent for Ahimelech and all his family, who served as priests at Nob. When they arrived, Saul shouted at him, Listen to me, you son of Ahutub. What is it, my king? Ahimelech asked. Why have you and David conspired against me? Saul demanded. Why did you give him food and a sword? Why have you inquired of God for him? Why did you encourage him to revolt against me and to come here and attack me? But sir, Ahimelech replied, is there anyone among all your servants who is as faithful as David, your son-in-law? Why, he is the captain of your bodyguard and a highly honored member of your household. This was certainly not the first time I had consulted God for him. Please don't accuse me and my family in this matter, for I knew nothing of any plot against you. You will surely die, Ahimelech, along with your entire family, the king shouted. And he ordered his bodyguards, kill the priests of the Lord, for they are allies and conspirators with David. They knew he was running away from me, but they didn't tell me. But Saul's men refused to kill the Lord's priests. Then the king said to Doeg, you do it. So Doeg turned on them and killed them. Eighty-five priests in all, all still wearing their priestly tunics. Then he went to Nob, the city of the priests, and killed the priests' families, men and women, children and babies, and all the cattle, donkeys, and sheep. Only Abiathar, one of the sons of Ahimelech, escaped and fled to David. When he told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord... David exclaimed, I knew it. When I saw Doeg there that day, I knew he would tell Saul. Now I have caused the death of all your father's family. Stay here with me. I will protect you with my own life, for the same person wants to kill us both. One day news came to David that the Philistines were at Keilah, stealing grain from the threshing floors. David asked the Lord, Should I go and attack them? He asked yes. the Lord. Yes, go and save Keilah, the Lord told him. But David's men said, We're afraid even here in Judah. We certainly don't want to go to Keilah to fight the whole Philistine army. So David asked the Lord again, and again the Lord replied, Go down to Keilah, for I will help you conquer the Philistines. So David and his men went to Keilah. They slaughtered the Philistines mm -hmm. and took all their livestock and rescued the people of Keilah. Abiathar, the priest, went to Keilah with David, taking the ephod with him to get answers for David from the Lord. Saul soon learned that David was at Keilah. Good, he exclaimed. We've got him now. God has handed him over to me, for he has trapped himself in a walled city. So Saul mobilized his entire army to march to Keilah and attack David and his men. But David learned of Saul's plan and told Abiathar the priest to bring the ephod and ask the Lord what he should do. And David prayed. David prayed. Oh Lord, God of Israel, I have heard that Saul he is planning to come and prayed. destroy Keilah because I am here. Will the men of Keilah surrender me to him? And will Saul actually come as I have heard? Oh Lord, God of Israel, please tell me. And the Lord said, he will come. Again, David asked, Will these men of Keilah really betray me and my men to Saul? And the Lord replied, Yes, they will betray you. So David and his men, about 600 of them now, left Keilah and began roaming the countryside. Word soon reached Saul that David had escaped. So he didn't go to Keilah after all. 
David now stayed in the strongholds of the wilderness and in the hill country of Ziph. Saul hunted him day after day, but God didn't let him be found. One day near Horesh, David received the news that Saul was on the way to Ziph to search for him and kill him. Jonathan went to find David and encouraged him to stay strong in his faith in God. Don't be afraid, Jonathan reassured him. My father will never find you. You are going to be the king of Israel, and I will be next to you, as my father is well aware. So the two of them renewed their covenant of friendship before the Lord. Then Jonathan returned home while David stayed at Horesh. But now the men of Ziph went to Saul in Gibeah and betrayed David to him. We know where David is hiding, they said. He is in the strongholds of Horish, on the hill of Hakila, which is in the southern part of Jeshima. Come down whenever you're ready, O king, and we will catch him and hand him over to you. The Lord bless you, Saul said. At last, someone is concerned about me. Go and check again to be sure of where he is staying and who has seen him there. For I know he is very crafty. Discover his hiding places and come back with a more definite report. Then I'll go with you. And if he is in the area at all, I'll track him down, even if I have to search every hiding place in Judah. So the men of Ziph returned home ahead of Saul. Meanwhile, David and his men had moved into the wilderness of Maon in the Araba Valley, south of Jeshimon. When David heard that Saul and his men were searching for him, he went even farther into the wilderness to the great rock, and he remained there in the wilderness of Maon. But Saul kept after him. He and David were now on opposite sides of a mountain. Just as Saul and his men began to close in on David and his men, an urgent message reached Saul that the Philistines were raiding Israel again. So Saul quit the chase and returned to fight the Philistines. Ever since that time, the place where David was camped has been called the Rock of Escape. David then went to live in the strongholds of Engedi. May 18th. And as we turn our attention now to the reading of the New Testament, we'll be looking in the book of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 21. And in John chapter 10, we see that God's people are his flock. And they must beware strangers and thieves and hirelings. Jesus is the good shepherd who knows his sheep and speaks to them. They know his voice, too. So he's not like the strangers. He protects the sheep. So he's not like the thieves, either. He gives his life for the sheep. He lays down his life for his sheep. So he's not like the hirelings who run away from any danger that comes over the hill. And when you trust the good shepherd, he leads you out of the wrong fold and into the right flock. He goes before you and leads you by his word. And he leads you in and out to find spiritual nourishment. You know, there are many churches, but only one flock and one shepherd. Is the Lord using you to bring the other sheep to him? Well, with that, let's begin our reading today in the New Testament. May 18th, John chapter 10 Verses 1 through 21. I, Jesus, assure you, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. For a shepherd enters through the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock... He walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they recognize his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't recognize his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I assure you, I am the gate for the sheep, he said. All others who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. Wherever they go, they will find green pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. 
My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will leave the sheep because they aren't his and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he is merely hired and has no real concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The father loves me because I lay down my life that I may have it back again. No one can take my life from me. I lay down my life voluntarily for I have the right to lay it down when I want to and also the power to take it again. For my father has given me this command. When he said these things, the people were again divided in their opinions about him. Some of them said, he has a demon, or he's crazy. Why listen to a man like that? Others said, this doesn't sound like a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Hmm. Does Jesus know us as one Psalm of his sheep? 115 verses 1 through 18. And the message of this psalm raises some important questions for you to answer. Where is your God? Is the first one. Gentiles visiting Jerusalem would notice the absence of idols. Back home, they could point to their gods and introduce you to the craftsmen who made them. Is your God in heaven, ruling over all? Are you trusting something less than God? Another question is, what is your God like? Now be careful you become like uh, the God you worship. That is a principle that is as absolute as gravity. You become like that which you worship. We now, the living God like can see you and can hear your prayers. He can walk with you and help you. He can speak to you from his word. And the third and final question I have for you is, do you praise your God? Mm -hmm. now, he's blessed you, you know. Have you blessed him? We always say, God bless America. What about turning that around and saying, America, bless God, for he has made us free and protected us and given us great prosperity. Yeah. He has blessed you. Have you blessed the Lord? He has given you promises. Do you trust him? He is the living God. Does your life glorify him? Psalm 115, verses 1 through 18. Not to us, O Lord, but to you goes all the glory. For your unfailing love and faithfulness. Why let the nations say, Where is their God? For our God is in the heavens, and he does as he wishes. Their idols are merely things of silver and gold, shaped by human hands. They cannot talk, though they have mouths, or see, though they have eyes. They cannot hear with their ears, or smell with their noses, or feel with their hands, or walk with their feet or utter sounds with their throats. All those who make them are just like them, as are all who trust in them. O oh, Israel, trust the Lord. He is your helper. He is your shield. O oh, priests of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper. He is your shield. All you who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper. He is your shield. The Lord remembers us. And he will surely bless us. He will bless the people of Israel and the family of Aaron, the priests. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both great and small. May the Lord richly bless both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens belong to the Lord, but he has given the earth to all humanity. The dead cannot sing praises to the Lord, for they have gone into the silence of the grave. But we can praise the Lord both now and forever. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Proverbs 15. Now type in verses praise the 18 Lord. 18 and 19. A hothead starts fights. A cool-tempered person tries to stop them. 
a lazy person has trouble all through life. The path of the upright is easy. All right. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, after listening to this, I have two questions that I'm going to ask myself and I want you to ask yourself first. Does my life glorify God? So if you journal after this, does my life glorify God? And the second is, does Jesus know me as one of his sheep? Does Jesus know me as one of his sheep? And what I, uh, and then um, Tom Dooley said this, we become like that which we worship. Who or what are you worshiping? We become like that, we become like that which we worship. So your question is, who or what am I worshiping? All right, so that's it. You all can share your takeaways. Was, it, was there anything that stood out to you? And remember, if you are wanting to spend some time journaling, you can use the SPEC Bible study method. And either you can use some of the verses that I gave you on the first part half of Waking Early for His Glory. Or remember, if you are listening or reading and you don't know what verses to meditate on and I started doing this years ago when I first started reading the one year bible when I was like I don't know what verse to I don't know I, every single day there's a, a key verse or key verses in black and bold and so um today's key verse is John 10 um verses 9 and 10 John 10 verses 9 and 10 so if you don't you, you know if you want to dig deeper and you don't know what verses to journal through you can always 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 use the key verse from every single day and that keeps it simple until you get in the habit and the routine of um, journaling and so remember the spec Bible study method tool um, I will try to remember to drop it in the comments again but if for some reason I forget after the broadcast because I go from like one thing <laughs> to the next thing um, um, such a routine um, it is on the waking early for his glory page so yes Tabitha what are you worshiping we become like that which we worship I thought wow that was deep and does my life glorify God and then um, the third question to ask yourself is does Jesus know me as one of his sheep does Jesus know me capital letters know me does he know me as one of his sheep all right what time is it so that's it thought today went very well what do you all think you too debbie you have a wonderful day and sharon parker i saw um your prayer request about the two-bedroom apartment is already done it is already done so you can go ahead and say hallelujah thank you jesus because it's already done all right so what are you all saying y'all are quiet this morning are y'all typing your takeaways or just listening to me talk <laughs> some more <laughs> talking some more are y'all done take away I pray about everything yes 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 I love this he said David asked the Lord he asked him again the set the third time he prayed and then he asked him again you know so he asked the Lord he asked the Lord he prayed and he asked the Lord again <laughs> yes definitely 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 need to follow that model that I'm a sheep, that's right. Yes, 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 Sharon, that's right. Anna says, have a blessed day. All right, you all, you too. You will allow God to take the lead, amen. I will not be distracted, amen, amen. All right, you all, so that's it. I think we're done. We're done here. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. I think that's it. Are we done? Am I forget? Well, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I think we're good. So I will see you all tomorrow. That's right, Trista. God, if it's so, let your will be done. Mm -hmm. Does my life glorify God? Does Jesus know me? Yep. Great questions to journal through after the broadcast. Mm -hmm. Go, yes. Consult God and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, Deborah! Deborah Johnson said it's your first time. Well, we're so glad you're here. So glad you're here. Hope to see you back here tomorrow. Same place, same time, 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs>
if God, yes, in every decision, take talking with God as a dialogue. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right, so who all went walking? Um, type a number three in the comments if you were walking for the 20 minutes that we were listening to the one year Bible. So um, that's a great time to get a nice 20 minute walk in. If you're not sitting and reading along, you can listen and walk and get a 20 minute walk in. Listen, you can get a 20 minute walk in every single morning. No excuses while you're listening. Walk in the word, walk in the word. Walk while listening to the word. Oh, Teresa, awesome. Oh, Teresa, you are so amazing. <laughs> I love seeing your uh, photos when you post in the groups. So you went walking and listening to the word. Yep, that's a good 20 minute walk right there. Oh, look at y'all, yay. <laughs> How do you get the Bible you all have? Um, you can find it on Amazon. Um, and this is what it looks like if you wanna take a screenshot, it's backwards, but this is what um, this is what it looks like. The publisher is Tyndale. Um, I, th I think most of the newer covers look like this. I don't know what the old one looks like, but it says one year Bible and the publisher is Tyndale. And you want the New Living Translation if you want to read and listen alone. All right. All right, y'all. Gotta go. I love you all. And I'll see y'all tomorrow at 430. <laughs>